Hello and welcome to another Employment Relations podcast for RCM Wales. This is linked to the Fair Pay for Nursing campaign and today's podcast is going to be split into two parts. The podcast is titled The Power of Nursing and we were very lucky to be joined by Denise Kelly at one of our pay campaign events for the RCN in Wales. Denise is the Vice Chair of the Trade Union Committee. She's an accredited steward, a health and safety rep, and was key in the successful industrial action that members in Northern Ireland undertook towards the end of 2019 and into 2020. This first part of the podcast will be focused on the presentation that the Northern Ireland Board had prepared for Congress last year. It really sets out the hard work that was undertaken and the positive results that Northern Ireland achieved as a result of their industrial action in relation to pay. Without further ado, here's the presentation. On the 29th of July 2019, the Royal College of Nursing Northern Ireland Board took the historic decision to ballot members working in health and social care services on taking industrial action and strike action over the nurse staffing crisis in Northern Ireland. This came at a time when there were 2,600 unfilled nursing posts across the system and a similar level of vacancies in nursing homes. Meanwhile, nurses' pay was continuing to fall behind England, Scotland and Wales, with the real value of nurses' pay in Northern Ireland having fallen by 15% over the last eight years and the cost of securing nursing staff via agencies having increased to an all-time high. These factors were having a direct impact upon the health and well-being of the people of Northern Ireland and the health and well-being of nursing staff. With long waiting lists and waiting times, difficulties in accessing services, and nurses so overstretched that they were simply unable to provide the level of care to patients and their families that they want to provide. The ballot was launched on the 9th of October and members were given four weeks to decide what they wanted to do. On the 7th of November, it was announced that members had voted overwhelmingly to take industrial action and strike action. This was the first time in the 103 year history of the Royal College of Nursing that this had happened. 96% of members who returned their ballot papers voted to take industrial action and 92% voted to take strike action. For the first time in the history of the organisation, members of the Royal College of Nursing held their first day of strike action on Wednesday the 18th of December 2019. Vocal and on the streets, but these workers would prefer to be inside taking care of patients. These placards have a clear message. They want better pay and better conditions. We don't do this lightly. It's the first time we've ever striked in 103 years, but I'm here because I think it's important that care is delivered to our patients in Northern Ireland. Patient safety is being impacted. Our waiting lists for consultant um, appointments is off the scales compared to the rest of the UK. So um, we know that striking is our last resort, um, but we do believe that that it's finally given nurses their voice back. Iona McCormack normally starts Wednesdays on the wards. Instead, for the first time in 39 years, she's joining friends on the picket because she believes the situation is dire. Nursing staff in the ward are telling us it's not safe. Nurses are taking on extended roles, giving patients diagnosis and in some cases even carrying out surgery. On the 8th of January, nurses were forced to take their second day of strike action. This time, RCN members took action by themselves. It should never have come to this. Nurses that you see on this picket line today and throughout and the Royal College of Nursing has been informing and advising both formally and in every other way politicians and decision makers of this crisis for many, many years. All a matter of record, we've told them, if you don't do something about this, if you don't waken up and see what's happening here, our, our health service is on a precipice. But I honestly, truly believe that nurses will continue to work and do the best thing for patients and their voice will be heard. A third day of strike action followed on the 10th of January. 
this is our third day now in strike. So I suppose we came here today with a lot of optimism and hope um, that our five political leaders will show the leadership and the bravery and the commitment um, that they need to, to sign up to this deal and get Stormont back and sort out this pay and save staff levels and all of that. And it's about the, them showing the leadership and the commitment and the, um, that we have shown um, by coming out here in the picket lines. So it was and very mixed emotions. It's not, it's not where we want to be. We want to be back in work. So this was not an easy decision, but we just felt that we had to do it. Finally, on Saturday the 11th of January, the Northern Ireland Assembly was restored and a new executive and health minister installed. This gave nurses fresh hope that an agreement could be reached. However, it wasn't until the 16th of January that the RCN was in a position to suspend strike action pending consultation with RCN members and the detailed framework document received from the minister being put before the RCN's UK Council. Following over three weeks of consultation with members, the ballot result returned with a verdict to accept the proposals to restore pay parity with England and to accept the safe staffing framework, which includes a commitment to implementation of safe staffing legislation. Safe staffing was the central part of the RCN's dispute and for the sake of those who use the service and those who work in it, we must get this right. Until these measures are implemented in full, the RCN remains in dispute with the Department of Health and employers. However, the movement towards a better and more sustainable health and social care service and the progress that has been made is because the voice of nursing not just spoke up, but was heard. Taking industrial action and going on strike was an extremely difficult decision for nurses, but shows that when we stand together, we can bring about real change for the better. I hope you've really enjoyed that, and I hope you can join us for part two of this podcast in relation to the power of nursing and the positive steps that were taken to support the industrial action in Northern Ireland. As always, if you want to get more information and learn more about the campaign, you can do on the website at www.rcn.org.uk and clicking on the link for the pay for nursing.